It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Reaction Beanie Yo 174. Day in the neighborhood, my people. Another day, another crazy ass video to get into, y'all. God is good. And, hey, we're going to take it back to a channel that we ain't been to in a while, but we've been fucked with it a good number of times, you know what I'm saying? And he popped up on my recommend, and I was like, yeah, I want to go back here. I want to check him out again. And that channel is Lazy Masquerade. Back to the lazy man. And the title of the video is Disturbing Things I Found on the Internet, Volume 3. I think we either watched Volume 1 or Volume 2, but that's way, way back in the reactions. Like, I don't know, that's probably like reaction being in your 77 or something. Like, it been that long since we watched one of these. But I want to see what these disturbing things are. But, before we see what they are, my people, come on now, you know you got to. Get whatever you might need. Get what you need for the story, man. We about to get back to the lazy. Y'all got what y'all need, y'all ready to go. And let's fucking go. The best things happen in the Today's video is sponsored by stamps.com. He's starting with his commercials early, huh? Y'all fuck with stamps.com, man. Shit. Fuck with it. And you, Lou, you that right there, lazy masquerade. How you gonna get the dick out? <laughs> All right, let's go. Ah, TikTok, where attention spans go to shrivel. Hmm. Speaking of shriveling, today's first entry revolves around a TikTok account with this username. Now I can think of a couple of colorful ways to pronounce that. But to stay in YouTube's good books, I'm just going to call it Coke in Store. At time of recording, Coke in Store's account has 3,500 followers. All their videos are in Indonesian, and all seem to promote gimmicky products. Portable washing machines, monkey tissue dispensers, things of that nature. All with accompanying hashtags and lighthearted background music to help shell each item. Just an ordinary small business account, really. But if it's all so innocent, why am I even talking about it? Yeah. Well, over the past few weeks, Coke in Store has live-streamed some concerning material, seemingly at random intervals. If you happened to catch any of the streams, you'd have seen something like this. Bro, what the fuck was that that we were just watching? What the fuck was that? How in the hell they go from those TikTok videos of trying to sell, you know, whatever they trying to sell or promote or whatever, to some shit like that? What the hell was that? Was that mud on him or her? I don't even know if that was a him or a her. Like, what the fuck? Man, yeah, disturbing ain't the word. What the? Thus far, they've all featured what appears to be a man in a dog confined space. 
covered in what looks like mud, or a mud-like substance. In each of the videos, this man either lies curled up in the fetal position, or actively scoops up the brown sludge and pours it over himself, as if making sure he's completely covered in it. What really makes these streams unsettling is that the man seems to be an unwilling participant in the streams. Yeah. His expression suggests that he's either uncomfortable or scared, and he appears to be extremely cold, often clutching his body tightly and breathing heavily. Some viewers have even claimed that they've tuned into the live streams and heard voices off screen angrily yelling at the man, ordering him to keep covering himself in the wet sludge though I personally haven't come across any recordings with other people's voices in them. All these streams ended abruptly and without explanation, leaving the thousands of viewers who had tuned in to question what they had just seen. Strangely, Coke and Store have gone on uploading their gadget videos to their account as normal, and, as it stands, haven't addressed any of the live streams. Honestly, these streams give off strong Blank Room Soup vibes, as if the man in the video is being forced to take part in a bizarre ritual against his will. But where Blankrum Soup was, in all likelihood, an art project that went viral, the truth behind the Coke and Store livestreams is, as of right now, more mysterious and uncertain. I mean, what even are these livestreams? Why are they being streamed on a gadget account of all places? Was the person in these livestreams the man behind the Coke and Store account? Or was Coke and Store the person behind the camera? keeping this man locked up somewhere. Mm. Now I can't find an exact date for when these streams first started, but the first mention of them I can find online came from Reddit user Ghoul Goddess in a post on the r slash internet mystery subreddit on December 9th, 2022. This post really got the small community over there talking, and where some brushed the streams off, others were genuinely worried about the man's well-being. Specifically, Many users were concerned that the man wasn't covered in mud at all, and that the confined space he was trapped in was actually a septic tank. With it could be, it could be, bro. He could have been got down in some shit, like literally, in shit and piss. I don't fucking know. That brown sludge actually being human waste. One of the main theories circulating at the moment is that these are actually fetish videos and that whoever's running the Coke and Store TikTok account is really into that kind of thing, and wants to share his or her love of it with their followers. Thankfully, that's almost 100% not the case. Scare Theatre has already done a good job at debunking that rumour already. Being a braver man than I, he took a look at some real septic tank videos online, and concluded that this liquid is almost certainly mud. Even so, these are still extremely strange live streams for a small business account to be posting on their social media. But then again, I suppose other companies have pulled similar stunts in the past. Mexico's Canal 5 comes to mind. As mentioned in my Selene Delgado video, Canal 5 are the TV station that used to post disturbing and out of context videos to their Twitter page in the early hours to help drive engagement. In a similar vein, could Coke and Store simply be making these live streams as part of a viral marketing strategy, a way for them to drum up interest in their TikTok account? Well, as many people have already noted, these so-called live streams don't appear to have actually been recorded live at all. Given the angle distortions and audio quality, it's much more likely that whoever's running the Coke and Store account simply played these videos on their computer, aimed their phone at their monitor, and live streamed them that way. Mm. If that is the case, and personally I do think it is, then in all likelihood, Coke and Store doesn't actually have anything to do with the creation of these bizarre videos, and was simply using them to draw people to their account and get more followers. More followers means that Coke and Store can sell more gadgets, or charge more for product promotions, or eventually sell their account for a higher price. Given that they've had a huge follower increase recently, with the majority of comments on their videos asking about their creepy livestreams, I'd say that that part of the mystery has been solved. But even if they were used as part of a social media hoax, that doesn't mean that the videos themselves aren't authentic. 
Koken store may not have been recording them live, but they had to have gotten them from somewhere. Question is, where? where? As stated, the owner of the Koken store account still hasn't addressed the streams. Well, other than by liking comments referring to them, nor have any internet sleuths been able to track down where these mysterious videos originated from. But maybe we don't have to find the original videos to close this case. There's been a recent trend amongst Indonesian influencers called Mandi Lumpa, which translates into mud bath. It's a trend in which streamers cover themselves in mud and ask for donations. Indeed, covering oneself in mud in Indonesia does seem to hold some significant meaning, and there are festivals where people will come together to do so and symbolically wash off their negative traits. It's possible Koken Store took one of those videos from an obscure part of the internet, and knowing that most people wouldn't know what they're looking at, made them out to be something much creepier than they actually are. But the man in Koken Store's videos doesn't look like he's partaking in a fun ritual. He looks scared. Thing is, if you watch enough of these Mandi Lumpa videos, you'll occasionally find old streams where influencers spent 24 hours or more in a mud hole. Near the end mark of those videos, their behavior is extremely similar to that of the man in Koken Store streams. They shiver, curl up in the fetal position, breathe heavily, and look miserable. Okay, well, yeah, that's probably what it is then. It probably just one of them, uh, whatever the ritual is that they do on stream. That's probably where they got this video from. Now, is that the actual people behind that account in this video? I don't know. Like, uh, Lazy said, they could have just been recording that shit off their damn computer then putting it on their TikTok. But I wanted to say at one time that it probably could be a ho hoax. Like, you know, that always going to creep in our head. Like, man, all this shit can be fake, bro. But at the end of the day, I don't fucking know. And I'm just going to stay 50-50 on if it's fake or not. And I'm going to lean towards at the same time that this that same ritual that the uh, other uh, Indonesian was doing. You know what I'm saying? I'm leaning towards that's what this video actually is. But let's go. The man in Koken Store streams may not look like he's taking part in a fun ritual. But neither do many of these mud bathers either. Exactly. Right now, we can't say with 100% certainty what's going on in these clips, not until we find the original videos at least. But it seems likely there's an innocent explanation behind them after all. Humans are drawn to the ambiguous. Creepy and unexplained videos like this capture our attention and leave us searching for and sharing novel answers. Though usually, the truth ends up being more mundane than we initially expect. And for this man's sake, I hope that is the case with this mystery too. That shit was still crazy. The fuck? Teddy drawing? My name? Next up, a piece of lost media that may help solve a 30 year old cold case. Mm. While scouring the internet for unsolved mysteries to cover, I came upon a write up of a Norwegian case by Redditor Akt Zigfumf. Namely, that of the Teddy Bjorn Manen, or in English, the Teddy Bear Man. On September 12th, 1992, a group of hunters came upon the remains of an unidentified person in the cold and remote heights of Hardangavida National Park. The park itself is a popular spot for hikers during the warmer months, but the area where the remains were found, a mountainous, thicketed area called Volker Nuden, was far from the well-trodden paths that most wise adventurers stuck to, a several hour hike from the nearest trail in fact. The deceased was between the ages of 22 and 27, and judging from the condition of their bones, they had perished in the thicket at least a year earlier. Damn. Curiously, a banknote in their pocket had only gone into circulation in September of 1991, so more than likely, they had ventured into the mountains sometime shortly after that, when the weather had already started to turn abysmal, and when Falker Newton was starting to become inaccessible. A cause of death couldn't be determined, though given that they had been found 1,200 meters above sea level, the authorities believe that they must have wandered off from the hiking trail, and then subsequently, froze. 
The clothes found on and around the victim's remains suggested that they weren't an experienced hiker. They also suggested that they had a very slim build. Several other personal effects were found close to the scene as well, including a teddy bear. Detectives named the doe Teddy Bear Man. This name actually proved to be contentious, seeing how forensic experts weren't entirely sure whether the deceased was a male or female. Dang. The skull certainly showed all the hallmarks of belonging to a man, but the extremely slender frame and feminine hips suggested that the teddy bear man was actually the teddy bear woman. The investigators' inability to identify the doe frustrated them to no end, and they released this facial reconstruction of the teddy bear man in hopes of jogging a few memories. Hell, I can't tell if that's a man or a woman from that damn picture, just being for real. I still don't know. Unfortunately, this sculpt didn't result in any new leads. Man, to this day, we still don't know who the Teddy Bjorn Manen was. It wasn't until 2022 that forensic experts were able to determine that the deceased was male after all. Though okay. some people, including the anatomy professor who helped to create this reconstruction, remain unconvinced. Given the confusion, it's possible the deceased may have had Kleinfelter syndrome or something similar. The deceased had been carrying some curious items on their person when they perished. This included multiple plastic bags filled with German brand items, including rye bread, baking powder, and small bottles of wine and water. Most of their clothes had also been produced by German brands, including this poncho, which had been made in either Hamburg or Munich. A map of South Norway, which had been purchased in Oslo, was also found close to the body. This wasn't a hiking map like one may expect, but rather a road map which would have been of no help navigating the park. Given that the thicket around the teddy bear man had been trampled down, detectives believe that they may have used the map as a mat to sit upon. Mm. Strangely, no backpack could be found at the scene. Given that the teddy bear man's bones have been gnawed upon by animals, some believe that a large creature may have dragged the pack away, though others think that the lack of a pack confirms that this was a naive tourist who underestimated the park and how treacherous it could be. Now we move on to the teddy bear, which was clearly old and was well loved, having been repaired multiple times. Clearly this 35 centimeter bear was a personal treasure. Now question is, why had an adult brought a teddy bear along for a hike in the mountains? Well, it may suggest that the teddy bear manen planned to end their life in the national park and had brought some wine and their favorite toy to comfort them and make the process easier. At least that way, they wouldn't be alone at the end. Ultimately though, without knowing who the teddy bear manen was, we can't say for sure. But that's where you guys come in. Do you speak German? If so, you may be able to help solve this mystery by helping track down a piece of lost media. An old episode of a German TV show to be precise. In 2022, the teddy bear man's case was discussed on a popular Norwegian show called Asted Norge. Forgive my pronunciations. After that episode aired, a German national came forward saying that the story rang a bell. They believe that in 1998, a German talk show called Flieg broadcast an episode in which a female guest talked about her son who had gone missing while on holiday in Norway. This guest was appealing for information on her son's whereabouts as she hadn't heard from him since 1991. Mm. Other callers and internet users agreed that the story sounded eerily familiar and also recalled hearing about it on a German talk show in the 90s. This was the strongest lead detectives had had in years. If they could only get their hands on that episode of Fleek, they'd be able to question the female guest and uncover whether or not she was the teddy bear man's mother. Then they'd finally be able to give him back his real name and give his family closure. Trouble is, despite German authorities releasing this tip to the public, that episode of Fleek has never been found. Damn. The show's host doesn't recall ever covering that case either and the TV network haven't found any records of the broadcast, though it is possible that the episode was deleted from their archive. It's also possible, even probable, 
that the tipster simply mixed up two different programs. Perhaps the case wasn't covered on Fleeg at all, but by a different talk show altogether. Yeah. The female guest, who many believe to be the teddy bear man's mother, also hasn't come forward. Though given the time frame, she may well have passed away before this development was announced. Regardless, this recent tip lines up with the authorities' former conclusion that the teddy bear Mannen was a German national on holiday in Norway, and that all they need to do is link him to a missing persons report in Germany. So, do you speak German? And do you have a taste for old German talk shows? If the answer to those questions is yes, and you find yourself watching some online in the wee hours, keep the story of the teddy bear man in the back of your mind. You may just find this lost talk show episode, and in doing so, stumble upon the answer to a 30-year-old mystery. The real name of the teddy bear man. As far as that one go, I just don't know, bro. I don't know, y'all. I mean, it's so many what ifs and so many possibilities. It could have been that. It could have been this. It could have been that. 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 I don't know. I don't know how that mother... Uh, let me stop saying that. I don't know how that person got there. I don't know how they, you know what I'm saying, end up dying. We just, this is one of the ones that we'll never know. So let's just go. It's no secret that some weird and wonderful discoveries have been made on Google Street View and Google Maps by curious internet users. From weird glitches to planned poses, there's a veritable treasure trove of bizarre happenings in every corner of these digital roadmaps. The full cast of your favourite horror movies standing in the road. A warped image of a tourist, making her look like a possessed goat woman. A group of unmoving pigeon people staring at the Google crew as they pass by. Okay, maybe that one is a bit creepy. But then again, aside from all of the obviously staged incidents, Google have unintentionally captured some truly haunting things during their trips around the world. Why that baby right there by, by his or herself? What the fuck? Many of them are well known at this point, but there still are a few that haven't been covered to death, and I'm going to go over a small handful of them here. Take for example, this image, which helped us solve a 22-year-old cold case. The picture found on Google Maps back in August 2019, shows a submerged car at the bottom of a pond in Wellington, Florida. The sunken vehicle, which a local resident found by pure chance after a Google search, was brought to the attention of the local authorities. The car was subsequently retrieved from the water. Inside, detectives found the remains of William Malt, a man who was reported missing from Lantana on November 7th, 1997 after he had failed to return home from a night out. William had called his girlfriend at 9.30pm that night to tell her he was on his way home, but obviously he never made it back. The 40-year-old had been missing for the past two decades, and for all that time, his loved ones were left to wonder what became of him. It's presumed that he simply lost control of his vehicle the night he went missing and accidentally drove into the pond. As stated on his Charlie Project page, Quote, William Malt's vehicle had plainly been visible on a Google Earth satellite photo of the area since 2007, but apparently no one had noticed it until 2019. It's Moving crazy. on, take a look at this image, which shows a woman in a dress and heeled boots walking along the roadside with a suitcase. Thing is, this image was captured in the New Mexico desert, literally in the middle of nowhere. The closest town Roswell is a nine and a half hour walk behind her, and there's absolutely nothing in any other direction for miles. Presumably she was dropped off in a car, but why was she left in the middle of the desert in the first place, with a suitcase, and where was she walking to? Finally, there's this image. Bro, I hope she made it where the fuck she was trying to go. Man, yeah, it looked like she got dropped off by somebody. And just, you know, just me speculating, just trying to put my little thoughts together on it. I hope it wasn't no shit where she got in an argument with somebody and they were like, get the fuck out. Or she got mad and was like, let me out, let me out. 
Man, cool, that is a long ass fucking walk. In the desert? I hope you got water. Let's go. At first glance, it looks pretty innocuous. But believe it or not, it actually helped to solve a missing persons case. On November 2nd, 2020, an 83 year old woman with Alzheimer's disappeared from her home in Andenne, Belgium. Given the woman's fragile condition, her family and friends were extremely concerned about her well-being. A large-scale search and rescue effort was launched almost immediately, which involved 50 officers, sniffer dogs, and a helicopter equipped with thermal images. And yet, despite all of that, the woman was never found. That is, until two years later, when one of the investigators decided, on a hunch, to check out her house on Google Street View. As it would turn out, the Google car just so happened to drive past her house, not only on the day she went missing, but at the precise moment she had wandered out from her home. This disturbing final image of the woman showed her walking in the direction of her neighbor's house. With that new lead, a second search for the woman was launched, in which investigators followed her assumed footprints. And wouldn't you know it, her body was discovered in a heavily forested area near her neighbor's garden an area which had been overgrown during the initial search. So overgrown that even the sniffer dogs couldn't reach it. She had likely died after having a fall. With that backstory, this image becomes extremely eerie to look at, and it's crazy to think that the Google team just so happened to drive by and capture it at that exact moment. If they hadn't, it's entirely possible that this case would remain unsolved to this day, and the woman's family wouldn't have the closure they now do. Makes you wonder whether any more active mysteries could be solved with the help of Google Street View, yeah. if only the right person were to look in the right place. Damn, bro. That last one was sad too, y'all. God damn, bro. That is just fucked up to just see that that's that lady last walk. And then she walked in the woods and fell and just died. I don't know. Why was she walking in the damn woods? You know what I'm saying? Ain't no telling though. People just doing what people just living their life and you never know when it's your time to go. This was great from my boy Lazy as always, man. Gotta come back to him again, as always, man. And y'all gotta come back to me too, man. Real, 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 real soon. Make sure y'all hit that like button for me and all that, bro. This, like, is some shit on the internet that'll just fuck your goddamn head up. And some of this shit was fucking my head up for real, bro. I wonder what's gonna fuck my head up the most for real, y'all. It's probably the damn first case. Cause that shit, but it was fucking me up because goddamn, um, it seemed like it was some fucked up shit, but then when Masquerade Lazy, he showed us later on that it's actually people in Indonesia who do this, you know what I'm saying, for whatever, whatever, they do this, like, this is a thing that they do over there, so, it, it made it more plausible, but it still was crazy, man, it, we gotta come back to it, man, and like I said, y'all come back to me, go and let y'all get up out of here, bro, I appreciate y'all coming back again, bro, and I please hope y'all do very, very soon. Now I'll just repeat myself. So I got one more thing to say. <laughs> Love, peace, and happiness. Stay safe. Don't stop. Keep going. Yeah.